so we're happy. It is a tribute to Roger Corman because he's a great director, he's also a great producer. Uh, he directs uh, 60 movies and he produced uh, 400 movies. Yeah, Roger Corman is definitely a legend. Roger was always called the king of the bees. He was making drive-in movies and he was making low-budget movies. He's such a great producer because he's famous for keeping things on budget and making one dollar look like ten dollars. Roger Corman paved the way for that kind of big movie, movie, pop experience. He gave a lot of people a start, whether it was Marty Scorsese or Francis Coppola or me. Peter Bogdanovich, Jack Nicholson, James Cameron, Ron Howard, Joe Dante. The whole schmear, the whole business is populated by people who went through the Corman School. It's quite a legacy. If Roger's not the godfather of Hollywood, I don't know who is. He was a very important teacher. I always feel I was a graduate of the Roger Corman University of professional filmmaking. He would throw you in the water and say, swim. If you couldn't swim, you drown. That's OK. Then you don't do any more pictures. So if Roger didn't exist, the movie business would have had to invent him. I thought that the documentary that Bertrand and Miriam made was excellent. It captured the essentials of my life in film. And I think it's much to their credit that they were able to do this during the coronavirus when not everybody was available and shooting was extremely difficult. You can't miss the people who are not available at that time encapsules my life in film and I'm very very pleased with it uh, because it shows even to me aspects of my life that I was not completely aware of. Uh, I myself listened and uh, learned at the same time while watching the documentary. So congratulations to Bertrand and Mary. Roger, what is the thing that you are the most proud to be um, a director, famous, to be a producer, to be a mentor? All of the above. Uh, my career has been somewhat varied, matter of fact, extremely varied. I started as a writer, then became briefly a producer on two films, and I looked at what the directors were doing, and I thought, I can do that. So I became a director. And then I formed my own company and started producing. And as the years grew uh, and I got older, I stopped directing and primarily was a producer and working with a number of very talented young people. And that was very gratifying as well. Also, we were our own distributors and we were distributing what you might call American exploitation films. But then I started um, distributing uh, what were then called art films. I started with Ingmar Bergman, went on to Francois Truffaut, Fellini, Kurosawa, a number of others, Alan Rene, uh, and I'm proud of all of that. I think it was a, a great opportunity, and I think I was lucky to be at that time because the uh, power of independent films has waned over the years. And during this time when I was most active was the time when independent films were more significant than they are today. Your life is as a movie. Do you think it would be a great bi bi biopic? Uh, it will probably be too long. Marty Scorsese once said, Roger could cut 10 minutes out of any film he ever saw. And I would probably cut 30 minutes 
Oh, the story of my life. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So uh, for the uh, U.S. premiere, I was sitting next to Roger, so I could, I was really anxious actually because he never asked about anything and he didn't ask to see the movie before or anything, he just trusted us. So it was really important to us because he was there and I was like, my heart was beating and I was sitting next to him, I could feel his emotion and I was, you know, just looking at him because of course I know my movie so I was just looking at him and I could see that sometimes he was laughing and sometimes he was uh, you could I could I could feel the emotion and I felt that he was happy so that made me happy definitely because it was so important uh, uh, to have his approval it's like the best gift ever how how do you how does it feel to see your your work, of course, your life over there? And of course, there was your brother, a wonderful, he was absolutely great, uh, Peter Bogdanovich, and to see all your life. That was, must be really strange. And um, I've noticed also all these people loving you, all that love. And even when you left yesterday or at the U.S. premiere, people were coming to me talking about you. So how does it feel to be loved that way, honestly? Thank it's you. partially surprise and partially gratification. I thought the film uh, portrayed what I did very well and the various people I worked with through my life, and particularly my brother, uh, it almost brought a tear to my eye to see my brother, who I died a few years ago. Abdine, uh, I felt it. It was really a great connection, and uh, it was so good to see all of them. It was just wonderful. He didn't know that I was so anxious or anything. I'm a good actress. <laughs> I can't top that. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you, really. So, hi, my name is Miriam, Miriam Brau, and I am the happy producer of Roger Corman, the pop of pop cinema, and we're here in Santa Barbara. Uh, we're French, actually, and we're here because we've been selected, so we're very happy, and we had our first U.S. premiere in here with Roger himself, and uh, we're happy. Um, well, Roger Coleman is an icon, I mean, he's a legendary, very well known in Europe. And I actually grew up with the Roger Coleman movies. And uh, of course it was like a kind of dream and uh, uh, we thought that it, was, it, it would be a good idea to have, to make a movie about him, but the best would be to make a movie with him. So we went to see him for something totally different. That was a small dip interview for driving, you know. And while he was talking, it just, I wanted to listen to him for hours. He had so much things to say. And I was surprised because he was already like 94 years old. So I just, after the interview, half an hour interview, I popped at the question and I said, uh, Roger, uh, I could, listen to you for hours, I would like to make a documentary about you. And it took him five minutes, he looked at me right in the eyes and he said yes. I was like, wow, I couldn't believe it. Then I said, well, we may need some archives, private archives. Um, he said yes. Then I said, well, it would be great if we could have few interviews, but and we want you to to talk about yourself and your career and and he said yes so it took us like one month to prepare everything we were so happy and we started the interview so he um, he kind of opened his office house and his heart to us you know he was so um, such a humble and gentleman it was like a dream. Then, of course, I had to... The angle was Roger Coleman 
uh, as you all know, he launched so many filmmakers. So the angle was Roger Corman and the big filmmakers, like, I mean, we're talking about Coppola and Scorsese and James Cameron. And so, of course, uh, the idea was to get in touch with them and say, hey, I'm making uh, a movie about Roger Corman and I would like to to have you on it. And that was the biggest surprise because Scorsese, Coppola, and all of it, uh, uh, Peter Bogdanovich and all of them, they agreed. And they said, yes, we want to be part of it. So to me, as a small producer, it was like a fairy tale. Here I am in Hollywood uh, with Roger Coleman, and uh, they all agreed to, to do the movie. And it was like, I remember I couldn't sleep the first night. I was like, wow, that's huge. So we started the shooting, and of course it took hours talking to him, and it was like, I mean, just a dream. I loved it, and I love him. So um, I knew the uh, the filmmaker, the producer, the legend, the, the icon, but I discovered the man, the, the humble person, gentleman, such a gentleman, and it was so easy. It was the easiest movie for me. Uh, as a producer, and so we are happy. I am Bertrand Tessier, I am the director of the documentary Roger Corman, The Pop of Pop Cinema, uh, produced by uh, California Prod. Um, it's a documentary about a uh, legend of cinema, of motion picture. Um, Roger Corman directed 60 movies and produced 400 movies without uh, lose a dime. Uh, he's a legend, but he's more than that. Uh, I am French. Uh, we are a French company, and it is in France uh, Roger Corman was recognized for the first time. In 1966, the French Cinematheque organized a retrospective of Roger Corman movies after the uh, Edgar Allan Poe uh, cycle and it was an event. Before that Roger Corman was considered as a filmmaker for driving, B-movies. Uh, he was not really recognized but it was the 60s and then the 70s, and the, at this period, the B-movies become uh, the pop culture. Um, and Roger Corman epitomized the pop culture. Um, directors as uh, Quentin Tarantino uh, have a huge admiration for Roger Corman because he is the, the pop of the pop cinema, really. Um, many document, many movies um, are in the collective uh, memory. Um, he directed movies in different genres, sci-fi, fantastic, western, uh, cars movies, surf movies, um, motorcycle movies. Um, his film was, his film were dedicated to the young public with rock and roll, etc. So he was in phase with the society of this period. What I learned with him, uh, I think this is uh, the same thing uh, as all the directors learn with him. Be prepared before shooting. Be efficient. This is the best way uh, to save money and to go faster. <laughs>